Welcome back to another infinitim.org training presentation for the 777. Today we're going to have a quick look at the flaps drive malfunction. This presentation looks at a flaps drive malfunction, covering the essentials of the non-normal checklist as well as some of the operational impact of the failure as observed in the simulator. Note this malfunction impacts the trailing edge flaps only. For leading edge devices, see the slats drive presentation. Flaps drive is a caution level message and denotes the total loss of the trailing edge flaps and by implication, the flap rods. Typically, this malfunction occurs because the flap slat electronics unit detects either uncommanded motion or a lack of response to a command to move, usually involving some kind of flap asymmetry. And so the FSCU locks out the system completely. According to the FCOM, the FSCU can revert to the secondary system, that's ICAS flaps primary, to attempt to move a flap prior to finally issuing a flaps drive in response to this major flap system malfunction. While it's not quite that simple, it is fair to say that the FSCU is typically unable to prevent an asymmetric flap condition, but certainly does contain any further asymmetry once detected with ICAS flaps drive. Assuming you manage to get them out during taxi, then the first time you're likely to encounter a flaps drive malfunction is during flap retraction after takeoff. And look, hey, that's certainly one of my favorite times to insert it in the simulator. In almost all situations, an ICAS alert during takeoff is announced, but unless there are checklist memory items required, the failure is left to be dealt with once the aircraft is out of the critical takeoff stage of flight. So that usually means waiting until the aircraft is clean, climb or comm thrust is set, and the aircraft's flight path in respect to MSA and navigation in terms of the SID has been dealt with. The normal, the, the after takeoff checklist, should be held until any outstanding non normal checklists are complete. However, Technically, with the flaps drive malfunction, you have the option of actually retracting the slats prior to running the flaps drive checklist. And that would seem to be in keeping with the, the non-normal paradigm that we use after takeoff. While in practice this does work, there is a good argument for delaying both the non-normal checklist and the slat retraction, if required, until a safe height is reached, then running the non-normal flaps drive checklist before deciding whether you're actually going to retract the slats. With either the flaps drive or the slats drive failure, the aircraft probably isn't going anywhere far. It's a pretty unusual situation that would require an extensive diversion at this point. The selection of alternate flaps overrides the FSEU and could almost certainly exacerbate any asymmetry that may have developed or may have been prevented by the slats drive failure. However, the leading edge devices, that is the slats, are available as evidenced by the checklist note advising you to move the flap lever to one in the case where the flaps are five or less. As the checklist says, FMC fuel and time prediction doesn't account for a flight with flap extended during the non-normal. Actually, FMC fuel prediction doesn't account for a flap or gear extended any time, normal or non-normal. We'll move on to the determination of flap position in a moment, but a common question in the simulator is whether the five knots that we would add to a normal VREF is also added to a non-normal VREF, and the answer is yes. This includes any additives for steady or gusting headwinds, as well as FCTM recommended additives for gusting crosswinds with auto throttle engaged for manual landings. The unambiguous identification of where the flap actually is after a flap's drive malfunction should be simple, and it is, but sometimes does tie crew in knots in the simulator. So let's take the scenario of a heavyweight flap 15 takeoff with a flap's drive enunciation sometime after flap 5 was selected. While all attention typically, and rightly, heads to the ICAS flap indication, there are other indications of flap position on the flight deck available to the crew. But firstly, let's look at the ICAS flap indication. The expanded flap indicator gives several pieces of information. We have the flap position indication, which is currently amber and keeping with the non-normal, and we have the magenta commanded indication. The fact that it's magenta indicates to us that while the flap five is commanded by the flap lever, either the flaps are not actually at five, or the FSEU can't confirm they're at five. All we really know is that the command indication is not green, despite the fact that the amber position indication seems to indicate that they are. So where are the flaps?
And the answer would be five. Well, probably. Meanwhile, the flap lever, where it is now and, and where it was before we took off, clearly tells us that the flaps are between 15 and 5. Except, since the malfunction could be because one of the flaps failed to stop retracting when it got to 5, now all of a sudden all bets are off. Okay, so where are the flaps? In spite of this fairly negative reaction, I think you can be confident that the flaps are less than 15. You can take that one to the bank. Meanwhile, because what we need here is more conflicting information, it turns out that the left and right PFD airspeed limits are driven by different flap sensors when flap speed is limiting. You may not choose to use this information to identify where the flap is, but since we're here, which one of these is correct? And which one should you remain below? And the answer is, of course, both of them and both of them. OK, look, that's enough of that. Cunningly, the checklist doesn't offer you the choice of flap five, only five or less. And in this case, that's the correct response. Sometimes we'll see the crew choose between 5 and 15. Look, based on the flap lever primarily, and since in all likelihood the flaps are probably very close to 5 anyway, nobody dies. You've got to love a Boeing. So just to summarise on the flaps drive non-normal. For the scenario where it occurs on takeoff during flap retraction, typically the better response is to just delay flap retraction altogether, assuming you can do that, until you're clear of terrain, you've got your navigation and your comms sorted out and you're ready to settle down and run the non-normal checklist. The checklist is pretty clear to stay away from alternate flaps and the reason is because you could exacerbate the asymmetry that the flap stride malfunction stopped. It can be pretty easy to overthink the question of where are the flaps. If you have any doubt about that, just go back and look at the previous slide. Look at the indication and work out where the flaps are. Make a conservative choice. And as a final piece of advice, slow down, enjoy the non-normal. If this happens to you in the aircraft, it's probably the only time you're ever going to see it. You may as well get it right. Thanks for your attention.